Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Friday night in the shop. I like our Friday nights in the shop. It's kind of fun, you know, hanging out in my shop. Uh, wish, uh, wish we could all hang out in each other's shops, but uh, that thing that we don't talk about that's going on is still going on, so this is the next best thing. We got our pre-made uh, store-bought Canadian Go Juice. This is as Canadian as ice hockey, as bacon, eh? Uh, I don't know a Canadian that doesn't sip on delicious Tim Hortons coffee. Mm. Okay. Shameless endorsement? No, I really like that stuff. What do I want to talk about tonight? Well, there's a couple things on my mind, and, and I, I like Friday Night in the Shop. It's kind of a, it's kind of a recap of the week's events. First thing, uh, I'm kind of fired up. Uh, that video yesterday, uh, Bucken posted the 7310, the 462, and the and the uh, 572 all walkerized. Uh, that was a good video. Um, that had to be a lot of fun to post or to post to be able to run all three of those saws uh, back to back to back. That's like kid in a candy store kind of stuff. Um, I'd like to get my hands on a 572 one day and, uh, and it's cool to see what Walkers is doing with those. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The first ported saw I ever ran, um, I didn't even know about porting then. And that's the, that's the straight deal there. Um, my buddy ran, my buddy has a 372 that's ported. Uh, I ran that thing. We were blocking up wood. And I was using my 394, and while he fired up that 372, and it was zipping right along with the big saws, and I was like, what? What's going on here? And I remember he just tapped on the top. He said, Walker Iced. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty cool, 572. I'd like to have one of those. I'd like to have any one of those three saws. Don't need it, but, you know, always fun to play with the newest of the new. Um, another thing, a lot, I'm getting a lot of comments, uh, in my, let's talk about muffler mods video. That's, uh, that's a fairly high traffic video of mine. And, uh, I had a lot of fun making that video cause it's, it's just my thoughts on muffler mods. It wasn't like a, you have to do this, you have to do that. Just my experiences porting saws and, and messing around with mufflers. And, uh, I get a lot of comments well, you should just put a tuned pipe on it. So I want to talk about that tonight um, a little bit. Also, timing advances. A lot of you guys have been emailing me about timing advances. Do I time? Do I advance my timing, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. I'd like to discuss that, and I'd like to take another look at this Echo cylinder. And I just happen to have. Uh, I got a 372 in the mail. Uh, we'll be looking at that saw in the near future. Um, another build I'm going to do for somebody and uh, I just happen to have a, uh, a 266 cylinder right here. I want to compare the 670 Echo to the 266. Um, just look at the difference in the differences and the similarities in what they did and uh, you're going to see that these saws are very similar. Okay so let's talk about mufflers again. You know your your typical here, here's one. Here's the here's the here's the echo muffler that we did. I'll put the light on here. There we go. Okay, your typical box muffler. We gutted that out. You can see she's completely hollow now. Uh, I think I'm gonna do more modding to this once this saw is ported. Okay, so you have this, or you have this. Uh, this is a. This is the pipe off of my YZ490. We are going to get to that project one day. That has been on the channel if you go way back. Um, it's just time and getting parts. And um, I kind of started on the bike and then I, uh, I didn't lose interest, but the chainsaws have been taking up most of my time. Uh, I'd like to pull that motor and... Uh, I want to put crank seals in it, maybe crank bearings, and just go through it, freshen it up, because now's the time to do it, because once I get the, the bike running, I'm just going to want to rip it all the time, so. Okay, so you have this versus this. Yes, this is a giant pipe. Um, I get a lot of comments, well, you should just put a tuned pipe on it. Yeah, you could, 
But here's the deal with that, guys. Um, Tune pipes take up a gigantic amount of space. Okay? Like, I know this one's giant, but you guys get the idea there. Now, I don't build hot saws. If you're building a hot saw, yeah, you put a tuned pipe on it. Um, with an expansion chamber and, and all that. There's, uh, there's computer programs you can use to calculate it. Um, I, I get that mentioned a lot. Um, I'm aware of those programs, but here's the thing. When you're done doing your calculations, you're going to get a giant pipe like that. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar with two strokes, dirt bikes, uh, uh, 500cc GP bikes. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge motorcycle fan. And if you look at a, 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 a race bike from that era, from the 70s, 80s, look at the size of the pipes on there. Um, there's, there's an old joke, I wrote it in a two-stroke, or I read it in a two-stroke um, book about tuning two-strokes. There's an old joke, uh, the pipe designers, engineers knew they have the pipe the right size when the bike's unrideable, and it's true. Um, so for a work saw, if you're going to run a full wrap and you're building falling saws and that, it's going to be impossible to put a tuned pipe in there. Because you pretty much want that exhaust to exit out the front. Right? So that when it's on the side, any which way that a faller or, or a cutter is going to use the saw, you don't want them getting exhaust in their face. They're not going to be happy. I mean, it'll be a neat uh, thing for a while, but after a while, the guy's not going to enjoy that, getting hot exhaust that's super loud blown in his face. So... Um, that's my thought on it. Uh, I'm probably going to put a tuned pipe on something silly in the future. Um, I might build a hot saw. I'm not going to lie just because I'm bored and it's winter. And what do we do in winter? We drink go juice. Hang on the shot. Okay. So for those of you that have asked, that's why I don't put expansion pipes on there because these are every saw I build is a work saw. Um, I want them to work. I'm just going to take this pipe and, and throw it back on the other bench. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, timing advances. I get asked this all the time. Um, and it's a good question, guys. You read that a lot online. Uh, a lot of builders do timing advances. That is a go-to move for most builders. Um... Do I do time advances? Sometimes, but not all the time, and often I'm going to say no. Um, I find most of my saws, most of the saws you guys see on this channel do not have a timing advance. Um, I find most saws, the way I port, and again, there's different, there's, there's two schools of porting, guys. And I'm not here to say one is better than the other. I just, I do the one that I do because it suits what I cut and it suits how I want to saw to run. Okay. Um, I do straight up old school port work where I modify, I modify the engine and change the timing numbers to suit the RPM range that I want the saw to run in. Okay. Um, the other way is to do machine work, drop your cylinder as low as you can get it. Okay, which gives you more intake timing. Often, often a builder doing that will, will actually epoxy the intake because the intake timing becomes too low. And that's fine, it works. And then raise the exhaust just a little bit. But what you end up with is a saw that has huge compression. And then, and then what you end up doing is, is and I, I've built a couple saws like that. And uh, what I ended up having to do is, is, advance the timing which gets rid of any detonation issues you might have and again this is just how i see it and it speeds the saw up okay so that's that's why a lot of builders uh stress um timing advances and that's fine um i don't do that type of porting i have um i tend to do a hybrid style a lot where it's like those the saws that i want to absolutely shred I do cylinder machining and changing the timing of the cylinder, okay? Um, and or, I, I will use any move at my disposal to make a saw rip. And, uh, but not all saws need that. This Echo, we're probably going to experiment with timing. I have a feeling 
that the reason why this saw is so lazy is the fact that it has a lazy timing curve. Meaning, I believe the timing is uh, maybe two to four degrees retarded on this. I gotta look at the specs, but um, if you guys are interested in that, I can actually advance the timing on this saw and we can see how it runs. I don't know, I've never done one of these. That's the beauty. So, um, that's the deal with timing advances. Try it. Some saws will really like it. Some saws, you, they're, they're going to be unhappy with the timing advance. So, and that's the thing guys with porting. Um, there's no magic moves to make any saw rip. Um, each builder will do different things that they've done before to get the saw to rip the way they want it to. And not all saws are the same. Um, not all saws are going to run well with the same timing numbers or the same port shapes or any of that stuff. The same muffler mod. And that's why you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to have a one scenario suits all saws. At least I don't. I look at each saw on a saw by saw basis. Um, 266s, stuff like that. I've done enough of them. I kind of know where I'm going, but I have, I probably at this point, I have three separate builds that I would do to a 266, depending on what I want it to do. So there's, there's my thoughts on timing advances. Now I want to bring you guys in here up close. I'm just going to pause you. I want to, I want you guys to have a peek because we're going to be porting this cylinder. The next part of the series, we're going to start porting the cylinder. I want you to take a peek at a 266 and a 670 Echo. I think you might find it quite interesting. Okay, guys. 670 Echo. Here, look. 266. The Echo and the 266, they have very similar sized combustion chambers. Okay. The only difference is the 670, there's a flat. See the flat on the 266? It's at the top there, okay? The 670, the flat is on one side. If you notice that, it's hard to see here. There's a slight flat on this side. The 266 has a smaller combustion chamber as a result, okay? So right there, that might be a reason why this saw runs better, even though these have very, very similar timing numbers. And they also have the exact same bore and stroke. Here's your intakes. Here, let's look at it from the business end. Okay. You can see this Echo has substantially more intake timing. Look how much sooner the intake opens versus this. Now... This, I believe this is an aftermarket cylinder. We don't know. Um, we're going to talk about this saw very soon in a video. Um, so I can't say that this is a stock intake. But uh, this is a nice cylinder. It looks it looks OEM or close enough for me. So, okay. Now let's look at the transfers. 670, 266. They are the same size roughly. But this has a divider and it has... Two upper transfers. This has one upper transfer. This is preferred because it is more easy to divert your transfer charge where you want it to flow. And also, some manufacturers will stagger the heights of these. Okay? They'll make the primary open after the secondary or vice versa, depending on the saw. Okay? Also notice... The 670, the transfers are slightly lower. Now they're just a little bit wider, but not, not much. Okay. I guess they are a little bit wider. Yeah, they are quite a bit. So there you go. I'm learning as I go. This is just, I thought of this while I was driving home tonight, guys. And I was like, hmm. Okay. This flows substantially more air than this. This is a better design. Now, the exhaust ports are freaking identical. Okay. In width, um, these saws, I haven't timed the saw yet. I, I took it down because I wasn't sure. There's some funky stuff going on on the side. Well, we're going to talk about this saw in a future video, I promise you. Okay, so I haven't timed this yet, but I'll slap a timing wheel on this saw. 
This top end has numbers on it. I'm not sure if this is an OEM top end or not. I don't think it is. Because there's no writing. Typically these have writing on the sides. I can show you guys right now. Uh, a factory. A factory 200 series top end. See? Mallee. Okay, so I don't think this is an OEM top end, but this is a 630 Super. Notice the transfers are smaller. Smaller saws typically have smaller ports, like transfer ports and that, because they're going to displace less air. So there you go. Just something to show you guys. Okay, I'm going to bring you guys back. Isn't that kind of neat though? Um, you know that this, this came out after this. I'm 99% I'm sure. I don't know what year they started. This started with the 6700. Um, but another thing guys. Here, I'll just move you over here. Look how similar these pistons are. Husky piston, echo piston. I guarantee that you could, if you guys need a piston for your Echo 670, I'll bet you money that you can interchange these. Something going on here with this one. Again, we'll talk about this saw in the near future. I just, I wanted to pull it out and have a look see. Okay, I'm just going to bring you guys back so you can see me, my beautiful face. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, I thought you guys would find that interesting. A lot of interest in this project. Don't worry guys, this saw will be done. I could have done this whole saw in a weekend, but I mean, you guys want to learn stuff and I want to teach you. So, um, again, entry level. Um fucking pulled out the the hot rod home light and uh thank you to everybody that emailed me uh you, if he pulls out solid i'll get a bunch of emails asking for builds which i appreciate here's the thing guys with the stuff i'm teaching you if you spend the time and and that's the thing there's no quick way to building a saw like that if you put the time in and do the reading and the studying and port saws you can build a saw like that i promise you but you got to put the time in um, saws like that are they're they're a labor of love a um, lot of hours in that saw it's not making it run it's keeping it running you know you can just grind away and make a saw just rip but it's like if it doesn't feel right if it gets too hot any of these little things um, it can go boom in a hurry something that's turned up like that so um, I love that saw. Isn't that saw giggly, guys? Um, every time he pulls that saw out, I'm just like, yeah. And then I remember that that saw was here on this bench at one point. It's fun, right? I'm just, I'm having fun, guys. Um, I'm a fan of power saws, and I enjoy working on them. And, you know, builds like that are special, and, and, and I'm happy to do them. Um, still not taking any work. Um, thank you to you guys that, that ask, uh, I get requests, I get a lot of saw build requests. I'm still not taking any work and the simple reason is, um, there's only so many hours in the day and it's like, if I can, I can do YouTube or I can do saw builds. I don't think I could do both guys. And it's like, I'm having so much fun doing YouTube that, you know, Maybe one day in the future, I'll take a few saw builds from you guys. But at, at this point, it's like, um, I think we're, I think we're doing a good thing on this channel. This channel's growing. Um, you guys are supporting the crap out of this channel. You guys are subscribing and thumbs up and lots of comments. And I feel like, you know, why, why turn this into, uh, how many saws can I port in a month? Um, that's not my style and, uh, I'm just having fun. And it's like, you know, if I was going to port saws full time, stuff like that home light even, I probably wouldn't do many of them because it's, um, those take a lot of time, guys. You can do it though. And that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm helping you guys. You start, whoa, did you guys see that? You start with this entry level stuff, get it down, do five saws, 10 saws, port your buddy's saws, port your own saws. 
and start to play with the numbers and shapes and, and study your own timing, write it down in the book. And uh, that's how you get good. And then after a while, you'll be able to run a saw and you'll know what it needs usually before you even time it. You can just hear it and feel it. And, and that's what I want for you guys. Um, and, you know, it, it, takes, it takes dedication. Because once in a while, you're going to build one that's really good and the numbers are going to be the same. And then you're going to have to tear it down and go, what did I do here? And sometimes it's the most minute detail that you overlook that you go, wow, I got something here. Um, that's where the magic happens, guys. Other times, you know, other times, uh, I was talking to my buddy today about um, when you build an awesome saw and it lets go. And it's like, you know, anybody that builds power saws, once in a while you have that random weirdo failure. No rhyme or reason. And uh, I was talking to a buddy today and he built a 394 Husqvarna. And that saw ran perfectly. Brand new crank. Brand new brand new bearings, OEM piston, OEM cylinder, the crank let go in the middle of a bore cut. He don't know why. Um, it happens guys and uh, it's uh, when that does happen you got to get right back on the horse. That's that's the game of being a saw porter. You don't go out of your way to bowl saws up but you know things are going to happen. Um, at, some of these saws in the cut are 12, 13,000 RPM, guys. That's a lot. Think how many times this piston's going up and down every second. There is no room for error, and things can go wrong really fast. So, and I think that's why I play with these things. Because, yeah, they're, they're a simple machine, but they're very complex, and they're very, very finicky. Um, I've worked on a lot of different engines, and it's like, these things, these things intrigue me because... There's like no room for error. They run the ragged edge of sanity when you turn them right off. And I love that stuff. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, that's Friday night in the shop. Um, we're going to start porting this Echo. We're going to start on the transfers. Thank you to everybody that's watching this uh, progress. Um, I'm having fun showing you guys, you know, a little, little bit of the things that I do. I'm trying to give you guys the basics of how to get going. Because I remember when I started porting, I thought I knew what to do, and then I started porting, and I went, what about this, what about that? And then I'm trying to scour the internet looking for information, and it's like, a lot of times it's not there. So, and uh, all you guys can do is, is try what I'm showing you, or don't. I, I mean, that's the thing, guys. I don't know everything. I just know what I know, and uh, if, if you don't, if you don't like some of the maneuvers I use, uh, that's okay too. Um, we're all different and we all, we all do things different. Um, hopefully, you know, I don't take it lightly that you guys are trusting me to show you how to pour power saws. Um, you know, I hope I have enough. I don't have every saw I've done on my channel, but it's like, I hope there's enough saws on my channel that you guys kind of get a feel for what I do and what I won't do. And uh, I just like to build good, strong work saws. Some of them are hotter than others, but um, they all got to cut wood. They all got to idle start, and they all got to last. Um, that's the name of the game in this shop. They have to last. Uh, I'm not prepared to build saws that are going to blow up in, in a week or two, you know? So, there you guys go. As always, I appreciate you guys coming here. Um... Thank you to everybody that's commenting and thumbs up, thumbs down even. If you don't like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs down. It's all good. Thank you to all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers. And uh, thank you to everybody who is offering support to this channel. Um, it, it, really, it really blows my mind that you guys will send me stuff to help me out. And it does help, guys. Believe me. Um, during this pandemic we've been having on, it's been really hard to get parts, saws, just whatever. You guys are really, really helping me out. Like, seriously, um, it takes me back. Um, it just makes me want to try harder and do more and more videos and better videos. And you guys are making that happen. Um, no one man can can do everything. And it's like, you guys are doing me solids. The, the, the support... Thank you guys. I could ramble on about you guys helping me out. It, 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 
it's it just feels good that you guys like what I'm doing enough to you know to send me screws or whatever right it, 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 even the smallest thing guys um, the smallest thing really helps um, it, it really does it, it doesn't matter um, all those little things is is just it's amazing guys I know I'm kind of babbling on here but that's how I feel and if I feel a certain way I'm gonna say it and uh, anyhow guys Friday night in the shop we made it through another week uh, we got a winter storm front rolling in here so I don't know what that's gonna bring but it could be some interesting driving and if it is we'll film it okay guys drink your Tim Hortons coffee no I'm just kidding <laughs> as always Thanks for watching. Take her easy. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.